In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, praise be to Allah, God Almighty, Lord and Cherisher of the world. And may Allah send His peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and those who rightly follow him, until the Day of Judgment, Amen. Allahumma salli salim baraka ala Sayyid Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Why does um, voting make you a kafir? So we said you have to reject Taghut or else your Islam is void. You have to reject the Taghut or else you're not a Muslim. And we said there's five ways to reject the Taghut. You have to declare them kafir, you have to hate them, have animosity towards them, speak out against them, keep your distance from them. Allah says in chapter 2 verse 256, whoever rejects Taghut and then believes in Allah, he has grasped the most trustworthy handle that never breaks. So you have to reject Taghut before believing in Allah. Because what's the opposite of rejection? Exception. If you're not rejecting, you're accepting. If you're not neutral, you're either accepting or rejecting. Someone gives you food, you're either accepted it or rejected it. Someone gives you a check, you accepted it or rejected it. You Someone gives you a meal, you accepted it or rejected it. So you see a taghut, a false god, a false idol, a false god. You either accepted it or rejected it. You either accepted it or rejected it. There's no way out. The taghut, you're either accepting him or rejecting him. If you're rejecting him, it would show in your limbs. If you're accepting him, it's also going to show in your limbs. Now, you see, where are you getting the idea that we have to hate them and have animosity towards them? Chapter 60, verse 4. When Prophet Abraham, peace upon him, said to his people, <laughs> Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, told his people, We are free of you and what you worship. You and what you worship. He didn't say you. He said you and what you worship. We are free of both. You and what you worship. Kafar Nabikum. Chapter 60 verse 4. Kafar Nabikum. We reject you. And there is risen between us and you animosity and hatred. Until you believe in Allah alone. Until you believe in Allah alone. So, we are free of you and what you worship and uh, we reject you and animosity and hatred has risen between us and you until you believe in Allah. Not until you stop killing us, not until you stop fighting us, not until you stop uh, waging war on us, no. Until you believe in Allah, the feeling is not mutual. The one who curses your mother, you keep your distance from him, you hate him, you speak out against him. The one who curses your father, you hate him, you speak out against him. So the one who curses Allah, you want to make friends with him? Does that make sense to you? The one who curses Allah, you want to make friends with him? Now, a lot of people say, well, wait a minute, a lot of these are Jews and Christians and other people, they come to these anti-war protests, defending the Muslims oppressed in Palestine, defending the Muslims oppressed in Iraq and Afghanistan. So what do you have to say about that? Yes, I have a beautiful argument for that. These same Americans, non-Muslims, who are defending the oppressed Muslims worldwide, are the same ones who do not want Sharia. They do not want uh, the Muslim woman to wear a headscarf, which is a command from God. They do not want the Muslim man to have up to four wives if he is just, which is an Islamic law. They do not want the Islamic laws. They do not want an Islamic country. They could care less about the Holy Quran. They don't want the, the Islamic verses, Islamic passages that condemn being gay. They don't want that. What do they want? They just want to establish a country where you can do whatever you wish. Be gay, do drugs. Do whatever you want. Life goes on. Life is love. The same people defending Muslims that are oppressed are the ones supporting the destruction of the Islamic laws. They won't say this in your face, but they hate Islamic laws. Sorry to disrupt you, but that's the truth.